Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the Ascension of our Lord. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Bruce Berta. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We celebrate the solemnity of the ascension. Christ has gone where we hope to follow. As we begin this celebration, we bring to mind our sins, the wounds that need healing. We bring them to the Lord. He came to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to reconcile us to yourself and to one another. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You came that we might have a new and abundant life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. May He forgive us our sin. Bring us to a new and everlasting life. Amen. Let us now give glory to God. Glory, glory to God, God in the highest, and, and on earth, earth peace to people of good will. We, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Gladden us with holy joy, Almighty God, and make us rejoice with devout thanksgiving for the ascension of Christ your Son, is our exaltation. And where the head is gone before in glory, the body is called to follow in hope. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The beginning of the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, O Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up, after he had given commandment through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. To them he presented himself alive after his passion by many proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking of the kingdom of God. And while staying with them, he charged them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you heard from me. For John baptized with water, but before many days you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, Will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has fixed by his authority, but you shall receive power 
when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witness in Jerusalem, and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. And when he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God goes up with shouts of joy. The Lord goes up with trumpet blast. God, God goes, goes up with shouts of joy. The Lord goes up with trumpet blast. All peoples, clap your hands. Cry to God with shouts of joy. For the Lord, the Most High, is awesome, the great King over all the earth. God goes up with shouts of joy. The Lord goes up with trumpet blast. God goes up with shouts of joy. The Lord goes up with trumpet blast. Sing praise for God. Sing praise. Sing praise to our King. Sing praise. God goes up with shouts of joy. The Lord goes up with trumpet blast. God is the King of all the earth. Sing praise with all your skill. God reigns over the nations. God sits upon his holy throne. God goes up with shouts of joy. The Lord goes up with trumpet blast. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, may the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power in us who believe, according to the working of his great might, which he accomplished in Christ, when he raised him from the dead and made him sit at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Go and make disciples of all nations, says the Lord. I am with you always to the close of the age. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with the conclusion of the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, Thus it is written, that the Christ should suffer, and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be preached in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. 
Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he blessed them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. They worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple blessing God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The story is told of a priest driving home one night. And as he turned the corner into a street, he saw a parishioner outside the parish gate, walking back and forth, and it was obvious he was looking for something. He would go down to the pedestrian gate and scratch around the ground at his base. Then he'd go a bit further up the road and lift up some papers and look underneath. And then he'd stagger back to the gate and the cycle would repeat itself. The parish free stopped to see if he could help. Apparently, this man had lost his keys. But the funny thing is, when he told the priest he was looking for his keys, he, he pointed down the road uh, to show him where he had lost the keys. Now the priest asked him why he was looking for the keys here instead of down there where he had lost them. Looking at the parish priest, he, he pointed up to the light and he said, but Father, the light is better here. I think we're all a little bit like that. We look in the wrong places for what we really want. The disciples are like that too. They look for Jesus in all of the wrong places. Luke reports in his 24th chapter, a conversation between some of the followers of Jesus and what appears to be angels. The conversation concludes with the men saying to them, Why are you looking for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. They were looking for Jesus, but they did not find him because they were looking in the wrong place. Why look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. And again, in the Acts of the Apostles, we hear a conversation between the followers of Jesus and some angels. They said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking at the sky? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will return in the same way as you have seen him going into the heavens. We look for Jesus where he is not. He is not among the dead, and he's not there in the sky. Then where is he? In Portuguese, the response to the Lord be with you is not and with your spirit, as it is in Latin and English. In Portuguese, the response is, He is amongst us. He is amongst us. The liturgy of the church is capable of teaching deep and profound truths, if only we had ears to hear. He is here now. In brothers and sisters gathered in worship, He's in the fragile new baby screaming their lungs out as I baptized them earlier this year. He's in our youth when they ask difficult and challenging questions as they try to live good and authentic lives in today's world. He's amongst us when people work to create a more just society for their children and their children's children. Christ is amongst us. 
There was once a church that had fallen on hard times. Mass attendance was down and people had stopped giving in the collection. They couldn't uh, afford to repair their awesome stained glass windows. The roof leaked. The church smelled damp and musty. And honestly, the parishioners weren't very nice to one another. They gossiped, they spread rumors. Everybody wanted to be a leader, but nobody wanted to serve. Young people did not feel welcome in this church. The parish priest was at his wit's end. He had no idea how to change things. So in desperation, he wrote to the bishop asking for help. The very next day, he received a response from the bishop. Well, you couldn't really call it a letter because it was only two dynamite short sentences long. Now, the parish priest was so excited that he called up the PPC chairperson whom he shared this news with. Now, the PPC chair shared some of this exciting news with somebody else in the church, but only after making them promise that they wouldn't tell a soul about the news that she was sharing. Well, I'm sure you can guess what happened next. Slowly, word began to spread. Little groups of people would begin to meet after Mass and, and talk and look at one another and point at this group or that over their shoulders. And then they'd return to their talking and their wondering. It was a hot topic of conversation. Now soon things began to change. People were actually nice to one another. And they went out of their way to help. Somewhere along the way, a mystery donor had the stained glass windows of the church repaired. Instead of judging and criticizing each other, people were much kinder and gentler in what they said. The church became a place where people wanted to be at. The parish youth began to return because they felt welcomed and at home. And all this happened because of one small little letter. Let me tell you what the letter contained. Dear Father so-and-so, I've been informed by His Holiness Pope Francis that Jesus Christ has decided to come to your parish and to live as one of your parishioners for a short time. Please make him welcome. Jesus is not in some heaven far, far away. We don't have to travel to Rome to meet him, or Jerusalem, or Mecca, or Moriah. He is here, and he is amongst us. Let the church say, Amen. Let us now stand as we profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen.
on this day when Jesus was lifted up from our midst, let us stand before our God in solemn prayer. That the Lord will grant wisdom and insight to those who lead God's holy church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord will share the wealth of the glorious heritage in Christ with all nations. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord will enlighten the minds of those who face future apprehension and uncertainty. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord will empower the oppressed of the earth with the strength of Christ's triumph over evil. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord will raise up those who have died and grant them everlasting joy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Most holy God, we ask you to answer our prayers so that in the time between Jesus' ascension and his return in majesty, we may find courage in the power of his blessing and bear witness to your great love for us. We ask this in the name of him who ascended to your right hand, there to celebrate life with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit to the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Be God and by the mingling of this water and wine, I become to share in the divinity of Christ, and will himself to share in our humanity. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness, we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, that will become for us our spiritual drink. Lord God, Lord God, be pleased with this gift we offer you. Humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquities. Cleanse me from my sin. Pray now, brothers and sisters, that these gifts that we bring may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the Lord has holy church. We offer sacrifice now in supplication, O Lord, to honor the wondrous ascension of your Son, Grant, we pray, that through this most holy exchange, we too may rise up to the heavenly realms. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For the Lord Jesus, the King of glory, conqueror of sin and death, ascended to the highest heavens as the angels gazed in wonder. 
mediator between God and man, judge of the world and Lord of hosts. He ascended, not to distance himself from our lowly state, but that we, his members, might be confident of following where he, our head and founder, has gone before. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, Every land and every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together in ending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord. You are the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take the soul of you and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be poured out for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us now proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, and the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of love, together with Francis, our Pope, with Butitlachale, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all those who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her husband, with the apostles and the martyrs, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to share eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through him and with him and in him and the unity of the Holy Spirit that all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Gathering as the sons and daughters of God, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. By the help of your mercy, may we be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins, sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. And so, my brothers and sisters, behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. How happy are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who allow those on earth to celebrate divine mysteries, grant, we pray, 
that Christian hope may draw us onward to where our nature is united with you. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in peace to give God glory with your lives. Thanks be to God.